module of the CI multi-site training, we are going to introduce the concept of tenant routed multicast. Essentially, how layer 3 multicast traffic can be forwarded across different fabrics, part of the same multi-site domain. We are going to first discuss the TRM forwarding behavior. We will see how multicast traffic can be forwarded, enabling the tenant routed multicast functionality or without enabling it, and what are the differences uh, between the two models. We'll then look about how to deploy Anycast RP uh, with multi-site and with the CI in general, which is required to provide redundancy to the RP function, which is needed for PIM sparse mode deployment. And finally, we're going to discuss more in detail how data plane traffic it can be established across sites uh, for a layer 3 multicast communication, looking at cases where the source and the receiver can be inside or outside the multi-site domain. Let's start with the TRM forwarding behavior. So some high-level deployment consideration to deploy tenor router multicast with multi-site. First of all, this is supported from ACI 402 only when deploying second generation leaf switches, so EX, FX, and beyond. That means the source and receiver connected inside the data center can only be connected to leaf uh, that have hardware uh, compliant with that EX, FX, or uh, newer. Second, there is support for PIM ASM and PIM SSM. For PIM ASM, obviously, we need to deploy a rendezvous point, an RP, and both options are now supported. We can have an external RP, so an RP located outside the fabric, or an RP defined inside the fabric. This is possible with multi-site from ACI 501 release. When using the external RP, we need to ensure that all the sites have reachability to that external RP via a local L3 out. Okay, so the local L3 out needs to be active in order for PIM sparse mode forwarding to work. Each border leaf node uh, runs PIM and form PIM neighborship with other border leaf in the same site and with the external router. So if you, you know, if you look at the show IP PIM neighbors command on the border leaf, you will see uh, this neighborship uh, being established. We support sources that can be internal to the fabric or to the fabrics in the multi-site domain and also external sources that are reachable by the local L3 out. And we will look about uh, both option uh, in few slides. The same is true for the receivers. Receiver can be connected inside the fabrics or can be external uh, receiver reachable by a local or remote L3 out. Before looking at the tenant routed multicast functionality, it's important to clarify that layer 3 multicast traffic could also be forwarded natively without enabling TRM between source and receiver that are part of the same BD or subnet, uh, also using a, a layer 2 uh, forwarding mechanism, basically the BAM traffic forwarding. This model does not require PIM configuration, does not require uh, the enablement of tenor routed multicast, and leverage the fact that each bridge domain that is defined in a CI has an associated multicast address, GPO multicast address group. Um, so how will this traffic be forwarded across site? Let's imagine that the source belonging to BD1 start sending a multicast stream. That multicast stream is going to be encapsulated inside the local uh, site uh, with a VXLAN packet with destination the GPO, the multicast group associated to the BD, uh, and it will reach all the local leaf where that BD has been deployed. Then if I have a receiver that sends an IGMP join for that group, that receiver will receive the traffic. That's the case for receiver one here. If, a if an endpoint connected to the bridge domain is not a receiver that uh, sent uh, an IGMP join to express interest for that group, the traffic will be dropped on the leaf. In, in addition to that, one of the spine in the site is also selected as designated forwarder and forward that traffic using ingress replication to all the remote sites where the bridge domain has been extended. The destination, the tunnel destination, uh, is always the overlay multicast step address identifying each remote site. For this to work, obviously the bridge domain needs to be extended, stretch across sites, enabling the L2 stretch and also the intersign 
uh, inter-site bump traffic allow option, right? Because this multicast traffic in this example is forwarded by uh, as bump traffic. Uh, one of the receiving spines receives the packet, encapsulated to the local uh, group uh, that are uh, associated to the bridge domain in that site, which can be a different group than the one using site one, since is uh, assigned by a different epic domain. And then the traffic gets to all the leaf, local leaf, where that BD has been deployed. And as before, if I have an active receiver, the receiver will get the, 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 the traffic. If I don't have an active receiver, the traffic will be dropped by the leaf. Okay. So you can enable, by just extending a BD with BAM forwarding enabled, you can ensure that even layer 3 multicast traffic can be forwarded between source and receiver connected in different sites. However, what happens if I have source and receiver that are actually in different bridge domain, in different subnet? In that case, I need to enable the layer 3 multicast forwarding functionality, tenant routed multicast. Now, this TRM functionality is built as a routing first approach, which essentially mean, mean that traffic TTL decrement will happen uh, at the ingress source and at the egress source, independently from the fact that the source and receiver are in the same BD or in different BD. So let's look at an example. I have a source here, part of BD1, it sends a packet. The packet is multicast routed, so I have a TTL decrement on the ingress leaf. And then the packet is encapsulated into a VXLAN packet destined to the group, to a multicast group, which is not anymore the multicast group of the bridge domain, but is now the multicast group that identifies the VRF that the source belongs to. Okay? Um, the traffic is forwarded inside the site, it reaches all the local leaf where the VRF has been deployed, including border leaf, and this is useful in case I want to reach an external receiver, as you see here. In addition to that, one of the leaf, uh, one of the spines, sorry, in the local site is elected as a designated forwarder and basically will ingress replicate the traffic to all the remote sites where that VRF has been stretched. Important to clarify that this forwarding of traffic is sent independently from the fact that in the remote sites I have a receiver interested to that uh, to receive in the stream or not. If there is no receiver in the destination site, the spine will drop the traffic. Assuming instead that there are uh, receivers that uh, express interest to receiving the traffic, the spine will then send the packet inside the site. It will reach all the local leaf where the VRF has been deployed. And uh, at that point, if I have a receiver that sends an agent join, the receiver will get the packet. Notice that on the egress leaf, we're gonna decrement TTL again. If I don't have an active receiver, then the packet is going to be dropped at the leaf level. This double decrement is important because if you add, for example, a source and receiver in the same BD and the talk multicast using an application that creates packet with TTL1, they will not be able to communicate because of the TTL decrement that we apply. They would have been able to uh, communicate using the BAM forwarding method that we saw in the previous slide. Uh, in case the source is actually external to the fabric, then we need to ensure that each site has a local L3 out that can be used to receive the traffic. So the source will send the packet toward the sites based on the fact that receivers have uh, sent a GMP join and the, all the control plane has been created. And we'll see the detail of how the control plane uh, is created in a few minutes. Um, the traffic will then be forwarded inside each site, so reach the receiver. We obviously decrement the TTL twice uh, on the border leaf and on the compute leaf. In addition to that, in this case, on the spine is applied an ACL to avoid sending the traffic also to to, through the spine to the remote sites, because that would cause uh, a, a receiver in a remote site to receive the traffic twice, right, from the local L3 out and from the inter-site network. But this essentially means that if I have an external source, I need to ensure that a local L3 out is active in order for local receivers to be able to receive the traffic. Okay, I cannot use uh, the inter-site uh, network uh, path for that. 
Now, for specific PIM sparse mode deployment, we said that uh, TRM supports PIM sparse mode and PIM SSM. For PIM SSM, there is no need of rendezvous point. For PIM sparse mode, we need a rendezvous point defined. So any cast RP is the typical model to uh, provide redundancy to the RP. So if I have an external RP, I can use, I can actually define a separate RP, Anycast RP nodes that basically provide the same Anycast RP function. Here you see the RP is 1.1.1.1. I have two external router that offer that RP functionality. And sources that connect to the different fabrics may connect to the different RPs depending on their uh, on routing and on their location. So we need a way for the uh, Anycast RP routers to uh, sync this information, the source information with each other. One approach is to use MSDP. Right, so MSDP is used so that they can exchange source information. Another approach, RFC 4610, is to use Anycast uh, RP PIM. Okay, so PIM control plane between the external Anycast RP nodes to sync the source information. No matter what, nothing changes here from the point of view of the fabrics. The fabrics both have configured the RP to use as one the one the one the one. It is the external Anycast RP nodes that take care of syncing the uh, source information as needed. From release 501, uh, we started supported the uh, RP inside to the fabric in multi-site. In reality, the functionality RP rendezvous point inside the fabric, uh, single fabric, has been supported since the CI release 401. How does this, the, 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 this functionality work? On the EPIC, right, for 401, I go and create my fabric uh, RP, I specify my IP address, and basically every border leaf that is uh, deployed on the fabric will basically have a loopback created with that specific IP address, 10.99.99.99. In this case, I have two border leaf, and so I have each border leaf uh, owning that specific address. And then the two border leaf will sync the source information with each other using the PIM protocol. Okay? This Anycast uh, RP functionality has been extended inside the fabric, also in multi-site, as I said, from release 501. So how does it work? So in this example, I have two sites, two border leaf in each site. That means that once I go on MSO and I define my uh, fabric RP, uh, functionality um, and IP address uh, as a loopback with that IP address is going to be assigned to the four border leaves, two in each fabric uh, defined in the multi-site domain. Now when the source sends, he starts sending the, the traffic, the first top router where the source is connected, what he's going to do is going to send a PIM data register toward the RP. And obviously it has two local RP which are closer from a routing perspective, so we'll select one of them. And in this case, the PIM data register message goes to the RP1, uh, which is the border leaf one inside one. Once that RP receives that source information, it's gonna use an Anycast RP register message to sync the source information with the other RPs that are locally defined in the sites, which is the second border leaf, and also will send the packet across the inter-site network to reach the RP, the border lift deployed in the remote sites. In this case, it's only site two, but it could, it could be multiple uh, sites. This allows basically to sync the source information between all these uh, RP nodes. So how, considering that that control plane uh, happen, works like this, how does it work, uh, how do things work end to end, and how is uh, control plane and data plane come together to allow this tandem routed multicast communication uh, across sites. Let's start with the example of uh, control and data planes with a fabric RP deployment, so with PIM sparse mode, assuming that the source is inside uh, the fabric uh, or the fabrics and receivers are both inside and outside. So this is uh, the scenario. Imagine I have a source in site one, I have a receiver in site two. Let's say that the receiver sends an IGMP join for the group G. Uh, as a first operation. This will allow essentially the leaf where the receiver is connected to build the star comma G state and then trigger a coop control plane message and send the coop information to the spine. So the spine know that now there is a receiver connected to, the, uh, to a leaf inside too. Uh, the spine will send that information, the coop message also to the RP, which is the border leaf 21 in this case, uh, which will also build the star comma G state. 
uh, if an external receiver join uh, the same group G, um, the PIM star comma G join will be sent uh, toward the um, RP, okay? And uh, uh, in this case, I would have probably an equal cost route. The RP is learned via the L3 out on site one and also via the L3 out on site two. Let's say that in this case, I, I choose to go left. So I go toward the uh, L3 out in site one. So a PIM star comma G join is propagated all the way to the RP so that the RP in border leaf 11 site one can build the star comma G state. At this point, the source starts sending traffic to group G. Okay, and this, as we said before, will trigger a control plane uh, PIM data register message to the local RP. In this example, I have a single RP uh, to basically register the source information. The RP will get uh, that information and will send an Anycast RP register message to all the border leaf RP defined in the remote sites. In this case, it's one border leaf 21 inside two. So the border leaf inside two will also be able to build this S comma G state. So both border leaf have the S comma G state because they know that there is a source active sending traffic to the group G. At this point, everything comes together because from a data plane perspective, the multicast stream generated by the source is forwarded inside the fabric uh, to the multicast group associated to the VRF and it reaches all the leaf where that uh, VRF has been deployed. In this case, it's a compute leaf where I have an endpoint which is not a receiver, so the leaf drop the packet, and the border leaf, which sends the packet toward the external receiver. This is thanks to the star comma G state that has been built in the external network between the router where the receiver is connected and the border leaf. In addition to that, one of the spine also ingress replicated the, the stream toward the remote sites, in this case to site two overlay multicast step address, so that one of the local spine can get the packet and forward it inside the fabric to reach all the leaf where the VRF has been deployed. And obviously here I have a leaf with a non receiver, so the leaf drops the packet, a leaf with a receiver that gets the packet, and also the RP, the border leaf, which will drop the packet because I haven't built a, a, a star comma G3 toward any external receiver because it was chosen the path toward the uh, RP on the left. Okay, so this is how things work when the source is inside and the receivers are outside. Let's now look the scenario where the source is actually outside the data center uh, or the multi-site domain and receivers are inside. Um, as before, very fast, the receiver join uh, the uh, group. So this will allow COOP to basically send information to the RP. The RP will basically build the uh, star comma G uh, state. Then the source external to the fabric will start sending the, the, the packet. The first top router, which is now an external router, will have to send the PIM data register message toward the RP. As before, I may choose the left or I may choose the right. In this case, I stay consistently with my previous decision and I choose the left uh, path. So I send the PIM data register to the RP deployed on the border leaf 11 uh, in site one. The RP will build the S comma G state and will send the Anycast RP register message to the other RP in site two so that he can also build the S comma G state. At this point, the border leaf will also build, a, uh, will also start sending PIM S comma G join toward the source, toward the first top router where the source is connected. This essentially allows to propagate that, co that S comma G state all the way from their RPs toward the first top router where the source is connected. When all this control plane comes together, now data plane forwarding can happen. So the source sends the packet, uh, the S comma G has been built across both paths, right? Because I have receiver active in site one and site two. So the, the flow is gonna go toward the L3 out of site one, toward the L3 out of site two. The border leaf will receive the packet, encapsulated into a VXLAN packet destined to the VRF multicast group. So it will go to all the local leaf where the VRF has been deployed, where I have the receiver, the receiver will get the packet. Now, as we mentioned before, we need to avoid this stream that was received on the L3 out from an external source 
to be also propagated through the InterSign network. So we use, we install a CL that ensures that flows that, that are received inside the site and forwarded inside the site after being received on L3 out cannot be re-forwarded across the InterSign network, which again prevents receiver from receiving uh, double uh, traffic, which will be bad, but at the same time mandates the existence of a local L3 out, active local L3 out, so that a local receiver can receive a stream originated from the external sources. Okay? The last thing I want to cover about TRM is uh, multicast data plane traffic filtering functionality that have been introduced in the release 501. Prior to the release 501, ACI only supported control plane filtering option, right? IGMP uh, filtering, PIM uh, filtering, RP filtering. Now we can actually apply filtering directly on the data plane. Instead of spending uh, time discussing things, let's look how it works, right? So I can apply source filtering and all this filtering, they are basically ACL or round map that allow the nice traffic uh, originated by a source, the source filtering is applied on the bridge domain where the source belongs to. And I can specify the specific group that I want to allow or deny, and also the specific source, right? So it's a source group combination that I, uh, the granularity source group. Uh, so in this example, I say, I go on BD1 and I say, I create a roadmap that deny the group G1 and permit everything else. That means that when the source, when a source in that bridge domain, for example, source S1, generates, uh, starts sending traffic to group G1, that traffic will be dropped at the source leaf because uh, of this uh, ACL that is applied at the source bridge domain level. And none of the receiver will be able to get the uh, stream, even if they try to, from a control plane perspective, join that specific group, okay? so. Source filtering drops the traffic directly at the leaf where the source is connected. Um, use cases, I could have, like in this example, two uh, bridge domain, a bridge domain one where I have a source sending to group G1, bridge domain two, I have a source sending to group G2 and also G1. And for example, in bridge domain two, I apply a round map that blocks uh, traffic sent to G1. That means the receiver uh, will only be able to uh, receive the traffic when uh, for group G1 when it's generated by the source S1 but not generated by the source S3 right so I can be I can build uh, complex uh, uh, rules that define uh, which specific source can uh, send traffic to which specific group so that the receiver are allowed to get it the second uh, data plane filtering functionality that we introduce instead is a destination filtering. So I apply now my route map, my policy, on the bridge domain where the receivers are connected. And here I can say, like in this example, I apply to bridge domain 3 a route map that block traffic sent to the group G1. I don't apply the route map to bridge domain 1 and 2. That means that when I have a source sending to group G1, the receiver G1, uh, the receiver in bridge domain two will be able to get the, the, the stream. The receiver in bridge domain three will not be able to receive it, right? And uh, the traffic will be forwarded across the uh, fabric or across the multi-site domain, but it will be dropped on the data plane on the receiving uh, leaf. Again, uh, I can, this allows me to build a complex uh, topology or complex policies where I could say I have two sources sending to uh, the same group G1 and I want a receiver in a BD3 to be able to receive that stream only from the source S1 and receiver in group BD4 to be able to receive the stream only from the source S2 and not uh, the other way around, right? So I can apply this route map on BD3 and BD4 that allow me to achieve that. This is it for the uh, lecture about tenor route and multicast. Thanks for watching.